Welcome back to another instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week, where in this video I will be talking about the ribald, small and pale plovers that are unusual among all other birds in having a laterally curved bill that does so always to the right. I hope you enjoy. Among the more approachable of New Zealand wading birds, ribalds have white underparts alongside a black upper breastband from mid-winter to the end of their breeding season. In their breeding plumage, the males are distinguished from the females by a black line above their forehead, although this is highly variable and is sometimes difficult to see in some individuals. Coming in at lengths of 20 centimetres and weighing around 55 grams, birds feed on a range of aquatic invertebrates, predominantly mayfly and caddisfly larvae, although they will go after annelids and polychaetes' wombs, small mollusks, and the occasional small fish when they can, something assisted by an unusual aspect of their anatomy. This assistance comes in the way of their laterally curved bill, which does so always to the right, at a 12 to 26 degree angle, allowing them to better reach their prey under rounded riverbed stones and crevices, being the only bird species known in the world to have such a bill that faces in this manner. Birds breed exclusively on braided rivers and are therefore dependent on them, doing so only in the South Island, east of the Southern Alps, with the main strongholds being the Rakaia, Upper Rangatata and Mackenzie Basin. They breed in monogamous, dispersed pairs, with their territories as well occasionally overlapping with those of other species, e.g. the also endemic banded nostril, black-fronted terns and stilts, tolerate them well, although they are vigorously defensive against other ribals. They breed in spring and summer from late December to early February, and then leaving their breeding sites to migrate to shallow estuaries and sheltered coastal areas in the North Islands to feed on the prevalent mudflats in winter. They notably frequent the Firth of Thames and the Manukau Harbour, the former being the winter home to 50-60% to of the total population, with them then returning to their breeding grounds in early August. As the time of departure approaches, they will gather in large flocks and will perform elaborate aerial displays, described as resembling a flung scarf. Their nest consists of shallow scrapes made in gravel, which are lined with many small stones, with their normal clutch size being two. The eggs themselves are a very pale grey, and are covered with very small brown spots which help them in blending in well to the surrounding shingle. Both parents will look after their nests and chicks once hatched, with them relying on their camouflage to avoid detection, with them then using distraction displays when necessary. Replacement clutches can be laid after any potential loss, either through predation or flooding, with them preferring shingle quote-unquote islands for additional safety from predators. They prefer nest sites which are less flood-prone, and have little or no vegetation for all-round visibility and accessibility, as well as a good food supply close by. All of this is however threatened by a range of factors. Hydroelectric and irrigation schemes degrade or outright destroy suitable areas, and recreational activities and the disturbances they cause from people using vehicles either outright destroy nests or force the parents to abandon them if they feel their sites has been compromised. Introduced predators such as ferrets, stoats, weasels and hedgehogs pose a significant threat to them, since they can take advantage of their freezing behaviour when faced with a potential predator, and can also utilise invasive weeds like gorse and lupin to hide and ambush them, with the weeds also taking up rival habitats and nesting areas. Native predators are also a threat, the key examples being swamp harriers and black bat gulls, with the populations having increased dramatically after human arrival and the extensive forest clearance they brought, due to these birds preferring open areas. Consequently, the populations have declined, although counts are often practical due to their cryptic behaviour and wide dispersal, although they are likely to number around 5,000 as of 2012, and are thought to be continuing to decline slowly. They are therefore classified as vulnerable by the IUCN, a category shared by the more iconic New Zealand birds like the spotted kiwi, and now only occupy around 60% of their former range, due to their lessened frequenting of smaller rivers. The population overall did actually decline even more previously when they were collected extensively for museum specimens because of their strange bills, with the population in 1940 after they were protected being an even lower 2000. A few areas of their range are protected through predator control, although a large refers is most definitely key in protecting these intriguing birds for many years to come. And with that, I thank you for watching this instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week. For next time, you are unable to vote for the Chasm Island Snipe, the smallest of their group that is restricted to only a tiny fraction of their former range. With that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.